we have to adopt healthier lifestyles to improve this NCD uh, stats in the region. And as I said, I hope that with the little kids starting up, little primary school children, we can get there. But some of the things we did at Sajakor, um, we, we organized internally a wellness program. And I, if any other business entities are here other than the medical profession, I urge them, you know, urge people to do that. Even local organizations, you, you should do that. Uh, we, we developed an internal program for our staff, and we had about, I think it's about uh, 30, nearly 40% of our staff actually signed up for it. We were shocked. And you had to have a vein, you had to have your, your, your normal basic test, blood pressure, that sugar, diabetes, and so on, uh, tests, pulse, and all those things. And then you monitor on a quarterly basis. And then we went along and did what we call a 10,000 step program. I think we were one of the first in Barbados to do that, and it has spread in the last couple, few years here in Barbados. But it, it was a very competitive type program for the staff. And you should have seen the, the, the difference in, uh, in the people after the, the, I think it was about four months, I think it went on for. There was a tremendous difference in, in um, camaraderie among the different people because they formed teams and you had people from executives down to the messenger on one team. So it was a good interrelation with staff, so that helped work, work morale. Also helped the health. Um, we, we saw a lot of people, the readings on their, on their blood pressure and, and sugar and also the weight changed dramatically in that 12 week period. And it's, it's a, it was a huge plus for the company. Um, it took time and effort. Like everything that is successful, it takes time and effort to organize, to plan, and to manage it, and to continue it. We have continued doing it on an annual basis in different forms and fashion. Uh, up to last week, uh, we had a wellness week in Barbados, so last week or week before. Um, I mean, there to control come, how to cook and how, what to eat, what not to eat, various exercise programs, walks during the week, and things like that. And I encourage people to do that in Barbados. It, it's something that the commercial enterprises should be doing a lot more of. The Chamber of Commerce has, has been doing it. And I think that other local organizations should be doing it as well. In our, our um, you know, health insurance costs, as I said, we got a lot of increased costs, but the preventative side, there are a lot of things in people's insurance policies. I don't, I don't know if you know that, when you, if you, all of you that have health insurance policies with any insurance company, these are the basics of, of a health insurance policy. And um, these are some of the things that we cover. You know, in, in our health insurance plan, the preventative side of maintenance, I call it, of your health maintenance. Um, so, you, you know, this morning I heard, I think it was the highest prostate cancer death in the world. But your policy that we sell, anybody here has one, you're allowed to have an exam as part of a preventative uh, exam checkup. And you can see all the different things for ladies in your, you know, that you're allowed to have. So. Once you're, on, once you're an employee uh, covered on this plan by one of your companies or, or direct member of the plan. So there, there are a lot of things that you can benefit from on the preventative side uh, because we have seen the impact of not doing so, as I said, on, on the health side, the, old, the older age groups, and then also ultimately, unfortunately, the ultimate, which is the death of name side. How can we provide healthcare in a, most, a more cost-effective manner. Well, I think uh, the Chase, I hope BAM and the medical profession of Barbados can do some standardized treatments on certain things that people know if I go to Dr. A, B, and C. Yeah, they might have a little variant things, but they're not significantly different in treatment. Um, and you get some standardized treatment, and obviously there will be a standardized uh, cost mechanism in place as a result. People also have a, a, a course of treatment from different facilities, you know. Some facilities may not be as modern and, and have as modern equipment, and obviously the cost may not be as high, but people want the best and most modern. Um, but the treatment may be just the same, or even better in some of the older facilities, and where the cost is less. Obviously, people that want to go overseas to the U.S., you know, in Barbados, we are still fortunate to have a fairly good healthcare system. Um, but there's still certain procedures that are done overseas. We have, we have well over uh, almost 3,000 claims a year, uh, people that go for overseas care. So you know, up to $15 million a year sometimes in claims. Um, but what, what you will find is that um, people, what we are doing now is trending towards getting people 
go to the lower cost facilities. We have signed um, some arrangements with agreements with various entities. We have now have an Aetna program um, working with Aetna in the USA, where we have had a very, very strong cost management um, system in place for the last two years. Um, where we now, we now have agreements with major hospitals in the Aetna program. So we have been able to benefit from a US cost saving significantly in the last, the last few years. We have had that for a number of years through Canadian Medical Network, CMN. But now that we have Aetna on our side, I mean, Aetna is a, one of the biggest players in, in healthcare in the USA. So we, we are able to benefit even more. So that's a huge plus for us. But some of the medical profession here, we've had some health fears. I think you all know um, there are other places in, in the region. Colombia, for example, has some very good healthcare. Um, language is a problem. Some people say, Colombia, I don't want to go there. You know? But really and truly, if you have to spend $40,000 of your pocket, if it's a U.S. treatment, or 5,000 if it's a Colombian treatment, and the Colombian success ratio is same or better, you got to make a decision in life sometimes. Do you want to mortgage your house? Up to you. You know, sometimes, as I said, the insurance does not cover everything. And people have the, the belief sometimes that, I got insurance, so I'm fine. It doesn't work, so. And you get a lot of surprised people and a lot of upset people because of that. these things happen at a very difficult time in life. So looking at other options, whether it's Puerto Rico, Colombia, Jamaica, Trinidad in some cases, or other, other lower cost hospitals, everybody doesn't have to go to John Hopkins or, or Mayo or, or wherever. There are other hospitals in the U.S. that have extremely high um, success ratios and that are very much um, cheaper or less costly than some of those big names. And I think doctors here need to, to spread the knowledge and, and so on. I think we, we, are, we like to send our patients, it would seem, to places that we know where our friends work or where you're, you have associates. But sometimes we, there, there are a lot of other good places around that are a lot less cost. The other way you can address increases is to increase the out-of-pocket costs. Um, you know, increase the, 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 reduce the claims by you paying more out of pocket. And that is something that, as I said at this time, people don't want to hear. But in all reality, you either pay for it one way or you pay for it the other way. You either can pay for it in insurance costs or out of pocket costs. Somebody has to pay the cost and it doesn't go away. Uh, let me put it that way. Shifting is a, is a way of taking from Peter to pay Paul and then Paul to pay for all. Because if you decide that a clerk coming in, he got surgical insurance, he has surgical insurance, he could afford to pay me $2,000 for this procedure. But Jane Doe coming in, poor lady, she doesn't have any insurance, but so you only get charged with $750 for this procedure. Because I can tell you now, I'm not afraid to say it. Some of the doctors in here and in Barbados knows the surgical insurance policies better than anybody in Barbados. Better than some of our employees. We could call some of the doctors and ask them something and they could tell us the answer before we could ask some of my employees sometimes. Because the doctors learn the policies. Cost shifting. I'm not accusing doctors of doing something they shouldn't be doing. But really and truly, if, if you can't say that one procedure costs $1,000 for one person, the same procedure costs another thing because the person has insurance and the insurance company can't afford to pay the claim. It's not right. And that, that sort of thing really needs to be looked at. It's not right. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the ways to reduce the health premium? Obviously, oops. I would say the insurance companies in Barbados may have created an animal that we, we have to live with now. We have created a medical reimbursement coverage. We have not really created a major medical insurance plan. And I, I think people need to look at insurance as a managing the risk. What can I afford to manage myself? And what can I not afford to manage myself? And as the minister said earlier, you don't want to have to go and sell your house to pay a claim, to pay, to pay a hospital, um, especially if you have, unfortunately, you have to go to the USA or somewhere else for, for treatment. But really and truly, the, the, the situation has, has reached a stage where people, 
claim for every single little thing that they go for, whether it's medicine or, or to the doctor. And that drives up the, the cost of, of insurance. That drives up the cost of your claims. And as a result, drives up the cost of your insurance. And if people don't realize sometimes that there is a maximum liability on your policy, and over your lifetime, that keeps lowering and lowering and lowering. I, I can tell you, we, we have had people that have reached a million dollars, reached two million dollars, and still living. So, you know, there, there are people who have had to go and sell their houses, even though they had insurance because they've had chronic illnesses and, and it keeps building up and building up every year, you know, they've, they've lived a long time due to medical care. So, it, it, it just, sometimes you've got to be careful how you go about claiming on your insurance policy and understand that at some time, when you really need that coverage, you may not have as much as you think because you've eaten away at it for the last 10 years by claiming for any and everything. It is insurance. You, have, you can do what you want. You have a cover. But I just think that people need to understand because some people, you know, some people don't read all the, the, the details of a insurance policy as many of us know. I don't 